Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna go over React portals. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by going over why we'd wanna use React portals. And then finally, we're gonna wrap things up by creating our very own portal, which is actually dead simple. And what we're gonna do in this project is we're going to create a simple modal for our React application. And the reason why I chose a modal is that uh, modals are one of the best use cases for portals. It's not the only use case, but you're gonna see this is one of the more common use cases for portals. So I think this is the best way for me to actually explain why we need portals. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I've created some boilerplate code for our application uh, just so that we can kind of speed this video up and keep it as short as possible because I wanna focus on the theory instead of coding out some base config. So what I've got here is I've got just an app component and you'll see that that's the only component in my application. And within this app component, I've got the parent div, which contains our entire application. And then within our parent div, I've got two extra divs, right? And so this first div, this is going to contain an H1 tag, which represents our header. And that's why it says this is the header. And then I've got a second div right here, which has an H2 tag that says this is the footer. So this kind of represents the footer. It doesn't really matter what they represent. I just wanted to make sure you understand we have two different divs. And then I've done some inline styles for both of them. And so if we take a look at the styles, uh, you'll see that the styles for the first div for the header is called main style and the styles for the second div uh, for the footer is called second div style. And if we take a look at them, you'll see that both of them have position relative and both of them have a background color of white. The only difference is the header has a Z index of one and the, um, the footer has a Z index of two. And this is important. There's a reason why I did this. And you're going to see that this is actually going to create some issues when we create our modal and that's why they're there. So, Let's go ahead and create our modal component and I'll show you why we ultimately need React portals. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new file. It's gonna store our modal component. And this is gonna be a simple functional component. And all I'm gonna do for now is I'm just going to uh, receive our props and I'm gonna render out the child props. So we'll say props.children. Right. And the reason why I'm doing this is ultimately I want my modal to look like this. So when I uh, render out a modal component, I want the, I want to be able to pass in the text for the modal and then this will get passed down as the child prop and then we'll render it out into this div. So right now it's a very simple component. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this into my app component and, so, and then I'm going to render out right below my header right here. So I'll let VS code import it for me. And then I'm going to pass in some text. So this is the modal. And then if we take a look at our application, we can see that this modal has been rendered out. Now, this, right now, this isn't a very nice looking modal. And with most modals, when you, what you normally want to do is have an overlay as well. So I want to darken the background so that your eyes focus on the modal and nothing else. So let's go ahead and style our modal and add an overlay as well, just so that we can make this a little bit more of a realistic modal. And so what I'm going to do is this is going to represent the text of the modal. And then I'm going to create another div. And this is going to represent the overlay. Uh, and so right now, since we have two different divs getting rendered out, we can't actually do that. So we actually have to create a React fragment. And so that's all we have to do in this case. And that's going to get rid of the errors. Then I'm going to add, pass in some inline styles because I don't feel like creating a separate style sheet. And I'll create a variable called modal style. And then this is going to represent the overlay. So we'll call this... Uh, style equals, uh, and then we'll just call this overlay style. And then up here, we're going to create our styles. So we'll say const modal style. And so a couple of things that I want to do. First of all, I want to make the position fixed. Uh, and then I want to position this. So we're going to put this right dead center in the middle of the screen. So I'm going to set the top to be 50%. And then I'm going to set the uh, left to be 50%. So this is going to just about center everything um, dead center in the middle. However, it's going to be off just by a little bit. So we do have to do a transform and then translate everything over by 50%. So we'll say minus 50% and then minus 50% as well. And then for my modal, I'm going to set the width to be some arbitrary you know, 600 pixels. And then I'll set the uh, max width to be 100%. We'll set the height to be 400 pixels. And 
and then set the max height to be 100% as well. And then finally, we're going to set the background color. And I'm going to set this to be aqua. And then finally, we're going to set the Z index. So because this is our modal, we want this to be uh, in front of everything. So on top of everything, and I'm going to set this to be some arbitrarily high value. All right, so now we've got our styles. And then I want to quickly style our overlay as well. So I'll create a variable for that. And I'm going to set the position to be fixed. And then here we're going to set the top to be zero. And then the uh, left is going to be zero as well. So this is going to cover the whole screen. And so I'm going to set the height to be 100 viewport heights or 100. We'll just do 100%. And then the width is going to be 100% as well. So it's going to cover the whole screen because that's what an overlay should do. And then finally, we got to set the background color. So we're going to do a slightly transparent black color. So we'll do uh, RGBA and we'll say zero comma zero comma zero and then 0 0.8. That's going to make it a little bit translucent. And then finally, the Z index. We want this to also be at the top of the screen, but we want it to be under our actual modal because we don't want to cover our modal. So we want it to be just a little bit less than that. So I'm going to set this to be 1000. And then here we've already passed the style. So let's take a look at what our modal actually looks like now. And then refresh that. And it looks like our overlay isn't working. Let me just double check. I got everything here. And I realized I spelled with wrong. So I need the H over here. And so now if we go to our application, we can see our modal. And so we got the, the, uh, trans, um, the, the dark overlay. So that's covering the rest of our application. And then we got the modal in the blue. And there's one thing you're going to notice, right? If you take a look at the footer, you could see that the footer is not behind our modal. Right? And so this is the number one reason why we ultimately need React portals is because of this very issue. And I want to explain exactly what is happening here. And, and so if we go back to our app.jsx, you'll notice that uh, we have this top div, which I gave a Z index of one. And then I have the, the footer div, which I give a Z index of two. Now, because this modal is a component that was rendered under this parent div, what happens is this modal is going to um, inherit all of the CSS properties, which means it's also going to inherit Z index. So despite the fact that the Z index of our modal is set to be, you know, 1050, what actually happens is this creates a stacking context, right? And so from a CSS perspective, no matter what value we set the Z index to a modal to be, it's always going to be essentially a one. And so because our footer div has a Z index of two, it's going to sit on top of our, our overlay or our modal. And so that's why we end up with this issue is because we always have to render a modal somewhere in our DOM tree. And it's going to ultimately inherit all of the CSS uh, of the components that it's nested within. So its parent component div is going to pass off all of the CSS. And so that's why we end up with this issue. And we can just double check um, within the uh, uh, Chrome developer tools, right? If I take a look at, let's see if I can find my overlay real quick. Uh, and so here, this is going to be the overlay right here. So we've got the uh, this div, which is going to be our modal, and then this is our overlay. Uh, you'll see that, hey, the Z index is set to 1,000, but it's still below the footer, and that's just because it's part of a stacking context. So no matter what the Z index is, it's actually essentially a Z index of one. So how exactly do we get around this issue? Well, if we take a look at how we render out our application, if I go to this index.js file, you'll see that we call React DOM, and then we render our parent app component, so our app component ultimately contains our entire React application, we render it onto uh, an element with the ID of root. And so if we go to our index.html under the public folder, you'll see that it, within the body, there is a div called uh, with an ID of root. And so React is going to place our entire application within this div. And so what I ultimately wanna do is to get around this issue is I wanna be able to render out my modal inside a separate div so that it's not nested within our application. You know, I would ultimately like to create a div uh, and then add it maybe a separate ID set to, we'll call this modal. And I wanna be able to render it out here instead of rendering it within our application 
where we'll ultimately inherit whatever CSS from our parent component. And so we can do this using React portals. And I'm going to show you guys just how easy it is to do that. So let's go to our modal component. And what we want to do is at the top of our import statement, we want to import React DOM. Whoops, that's not the one I wanted. So we want to import React DOM uh, from React DOM. This is no different than under index.js where we import React DOM so that we can call the render method. And so then within our modal component, uh, where we call the return statement, we're going to return a modal. So I'll call React DOM and then I'll say dot create portal. So we're going to create a portal to this other uh, HTML element. So this div with the ID of modal is going to be where we basically connect our portal to. So uh, to do that, you know, there's two, there's two things that we have to pass into this method, into the create portal method. First of all, it's going to be our JSX element that we normally return. And then the second thing is going to be where do we want to create the portal to? And so we're going to call document dot get element by ID, right? This is no different than how we did it with the render method in the index.js file. And then we're going to just set this to be modal. And so now if I save this and we take a look at our application, look at this. Our footer is now behind the overlay. And that's ultimately because if we take a look at uh, Chrome developer tools and take a look at our, uh, take a look at the DOM, right? We have two separate divs now. We've got the div uh, called root, which is going to uh, load our entire application. And if I kind of just open that up, you'll see um, the header and then the footer. And then if we go under that, we have the div for the modal. And so the modal is going to then render everything that's related to the modal itself. And so this is going to prevent us from inheriting any of the CSS from our application. And it's going to prevent us from um, getting stuck in that uh, stacking context. And so that's why this issue is no longer there. Now, one of the best parts about React portals is that regardless of where I create a portal to, I, you know, if I go to my index.html, right, I'm loading it into this div called modal, but I can really load it anywhere within this HTML file. I can create another div as well and create a portal directly to there. So no matter where I ultimately render out my modal component, it's still going to behave like a React child in every other way. And this includes event bubbling. So if I go to my app component, you'll see that I'm actually loading this modal within this div. So this modal still behaves like a React child to this div element. And so we can actually uh, take advantage of event bubbling. So let's say for, as an example, uh, first of all, I'm going to comment this out. I'm going to set an on click event handler. And here I'm just going to say, you know, when it gets clicked, I'm just going to do a console.log div was clicked. We'll save that. And then if I go to my Chrome developer tools, change the console. And if I click on this div, it says div was clicked. So our on click event handler works. But what's amazing about React portals is if I uncomment this out, and then I click on the modal, take a look at that. I still get that on click event handler. So the event of clicking on the modal actually propagates up to the parent component. And that's what's amazing about React portals is that this modal, even though it gets rendered out into a completely separate div, right? Because it's, a, because it's still a child React component to the parent div, we can still take advantage of event bubbling as well. And so guys, that's all I wanted to show you from a React portal perspective. You can see how easy it is to create React portals. All you got to do is just um, call the react-dom.createPortal method and then just create a separate div within your index.html file so that you can create a portal to it. And it really is as simple as that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you want more content, feel free to subscribe to my channel and I'll make sure I keep pumping out great content for you guys.